gentlemen, we're back. We have the Matthew Broussard. How you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Um, if they're kind of like, oh, I don't really know who this guy is. Well, let me tell you. He's uh, many things. Uh, Stand-up comedian for sure. Um, and uh, we're going to kind of go into it, man. Um, so talk to me about uh, kind of NACA. How did you, um, did you kind of submit for it yourself? Did you have a manager? Kind of, how did you? No, I had, um, I had, I was recommended to a college agency through my manager very early on with that manager and uh, they liked my tape and then I paid for submission fees and they submitted me to a couple NACAs and my first round of it, I had, I think I booked three, two or three. And off of those, I was able to book enough shows. That was my first year without a job. I got fired. So those needed to happen and they did yeah. and i got to i got to stay doing what i was doing and not have to move or, or pick up a job that might interfere with with uh the schedule i was already building gotcha bro what were you what were you doing um for work um while you're still getting into stand-up i was in finance when i started i was in houston texas i worked a day job it was a nine to five monday to friday uh -huh. which is one of the most convenient schedules you could have. Uh, I, it wasn't the most sophisticated job. It wasn't super lucrative. So it wasn't like a Wall Street type job. Um, it was um, it was a, it, like an early level. And it was a small, very small company. I was a third employee. So um, my boss was really supportive and understanding. Um, I, I was going to open mics every night and go, going to shows every week and going out of town whenever I could to do stand up. It really just took over very quickly for me and nice. my work suffered greatly from it. Yeah. Heard that. Um, all right, man, let's go into, uh, comedy central and, uh, and late night, man. How did you, uh, how did you get those shows? And then when, when were you kind of like, okay, I'm ready to do, to do them. Uh, it, it started Thanksgiving, 2000, 12 um i was i was in houston i had i had won a contest i had won two contests and that kind of had me working more around houston and um my good friend bob biggerstaff was headlining um cap city and i asked him if i could do guest spots on his show uh and he said sure so i drove down found a place to crash and i did i think just a pair of guest spots on a on a friday or yeah friday night and um the the booker there took an interest in me and a few weeks later there was a comedy central showcase at that club and that club uh they they had me on it and um remarkably i didn't understand at the time that i was booked from that um i i, I didn't i didn't grasp how how what, what the odds were against me and how really how much of it, not, not my own doing, just a chance thing that was. Um, uh, Adam Devine, who was, whose show it was, mentioned in an article later that they kind of just did it on a whim of how fun would it be to just give this to someone we don't know yet. Someone without an agent, someone who's not really uh, known in LA or New York, and I just happened to be the name the wheel landed on. Nice. Um, and that, uh, that was why I still had a job. And by the time it aired, I didn't have a job anymore. I was fired <laughs> and, and had moved to LA. Um, but that that started things for me. That got me the manager, who got me the college agent, and that was where things kind of started making sense financially to keep keep pursuing that. But I was not trying to jump that. I was really trying to keep my day job as long as I could. I knew that the second I had to make comedy my living, it would suffer, and I would suffer. And uh, I was I was holding on as long as I, I was able to. Okay, heard that. And then let's okay, let's talk about the the tonight shows, the late shows. Um, how are those uh, different yeah. than regular ones? Conan, so versus Comedy Central, uh, like that. Yeah. Conan, it's it's clean for one. Um, it's five minutes. It's it's different. It's it's very prestigious. You know, with the Comedy Central, they it's a show set up to do stand up. They hire a crowd, or they 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 get a crowd uh, who's there for stand up. The whole purpose of the night is stand up. Uh, uh, on on Conan or Tonight Show, you it's the last five minutes of the show, and for that reason, it can be trickier. Um, it needs to be a broader set. It needs to be really time efficient. It needs to come in, you know, preferably between four thirty and five thirty. Um, not five thirty, four thirty and five, 
Um, and that I worked a lot harder at. That was, so when I did my first, I recorded my first set at Central in 2013. I did Conan in 2016. And I, I can tell you, I was working that entire time to get on Conan. I was submitting, I was doing, trying trying to get on the late night shows. And, and um, it, it took, it just took the booker seeing me and seeing that I was ready and uh, who, who I'd had a relationship with just because he was at shows. And uh, that summer came around and I had a Comedy Central half hour. And I think in conjunction with that, I was offered Conan. And that was a that was a really cool experience for me. All the other stuff was neat, but Conan was was just kind of up there on a level. I uh, it was just a new level. And, uh, and, and I was really happy with how the set went. Nice. OK, heard that. Mm. Um, let's talk about. Um early um kind of like early early stories uh kind of like worst gig kind of uh what was kind of what kind of comedian did you want to be um and uh, when when did you what set was it where you were like oh, okay I can kind of I'm kind of good at this there I I started trying to be edgy and trying to be silly I even tried to be a one-liner for a little while but I was trying too hard to be edgy uh, because of what I enjoyed at that time. And I found myself moving towards cleaner and, and sharper jokes. Um, and I got asked to do, uh, it was like one or two corporate gigs in, in Houston and not like full on corporate, just my friend, my friend was just doing a clean show for like a, some company uh, yeah. and they, they wanted 15 minutes uh, before the headline is set. And they asked me to do it. I was really nervous to go clean. I had to look through my set and figure it out. And I remember just just being happy with it and how how fun it felt to do well without having to hurt anyone's feelings. And I remember doing a, a, a Jewish community center as well. And I remember there was just having a fun set and really connecting with the crowd. And then I had one joke that I knew would offend them and just thinking, why would I want to say that? Why would I want to hurt their feelings? They came here to have fun. Why would I want to why would I want to purposefully make someone's day worse with comedy? That seems the opposite of what we do. And that that was a transition for me. And again, that's what helped with the college shows. That's what helped me was, was having the ability to go, if not all the way clean or at least more clever. So that was a transition for me. And uh, I remember one night I was at the Houston Improv and I had a joke and I was really excited to tell it. And I told it and there was silence. And I was just, ah, that's a bummer. The joke didn't work. That's too bad. And then before I could finish the thought, the room started laughing. It took a full two seconds for the joke to process. And I remember that being a really cool feeling of giving the crowd just enough information for them to piece it together and how that delay created an extra element. Um, forcing people to put together more information than the, the forcing people to think a little bit and, and piecing together what you're giving them. That, that became one of my goals with writing. And that was, that was uh, I think, what I still try to do now. Okay, when, when they say clean, yeah. Are they uh, topics, language? What are kind of the boundaries? Oh man, um, there's no good answer for that. There's okay. blue state clean, there's red state clean. You know, you can go to a college show, fuck isn't what's gonna get you in trouble. If, okay. you, if you may say something about women or if you say something that's homophobic, even if it's cleanly worded, that's gonna get you in trouble. So sexual content. Whereas if you're doing like a clean Christian type audience, conservative audience, it's sex that will get you in trouble and drugs that will get you in trouble. But making broad generalizations about marginalized people, <laughs> that's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, I mean, oftentimes what it really is, is figure out who's watching the show. Okay. Figure out who is employed, who booked you, and just make sure they're laughing the whole time. Mm. Uh, make sure no one writes any articles about you because you can't really defend against that. But you're, there's only one person, the, the, the president of the university isn't the person who booked you, the CEO of the company isn't the person who is not even going to be at the show, it's whoever hired you, just making right. sure that they're chill with everything, and, and if you're doing, if you're doing well, you can obviously slip in some words, I obviously ask, my big things are, are, are swear words okay, and usually they are on most shows, even, even college shows, and then, um, just, I, yeah, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to learn a feel for, uh, it sucks to cross that line, but some, it also sucks to just bomb not being able to pull out your hits. Yeah. Um, so there are definitely different levels of clean. I'm not Regan clean by any means. I'm not even like squeaky, like I'm not even moderately clean, but like I, it's, it's sometimes, uh, what I've noticed is sometimes a big SAT word cancels out a four letter mm. word. Whereas if you sound smart, you get yeah. to get, you, you get away with, um, 
a little more foul language. It's it's and and there are comics like this. There are comics who are clean who you would swear are dirty just because of their general demeanor. And mm -hmm. there are comics who are I'm someone like Mulaney. You think he's clean in your mind. You process him as clean, but watch this. Plenty of <laughs> yeah, because he's just so put together. So there's there's some weird sleight of hand, some illusion that goes with what we judge as clean and what, and what is not. Heard that. Um. All right, man. We're gonna wrap it up. Um. Getting close to that ten minute mark. Let me. Um. I'm gonna ask you one more. One more question. Um. Of course. So as much as you want. Oh, appreciate you. Um. So I know I know you have the podcast now. Um. Mm -hmm. Are you? Um. I heard you talking about how your manager was like, okay, start a podcast. This will help. How much mm -hmm. of creating other stuff that's not stand up, whether that be like acting skits, how much is that helping you? Um, and how much time do you put to creating other stuff, like your own work? Um, I I am always trying to make more stuff uh, because you can't really. It's weird to spend more than an hour on stand up a day. Like I would be blown away if Fast. I sat down and actually wrote for an hour. So there's a lot of other time. I like tweeting jokes. I like doing a podcast. It's uh, it's good for publicity. It's also good for just talking out ideas. A lot of times when you're just talking to someone for a while, you can figure out what you want to write about. Um, writing sketches is really fun and it's a really great way to build an audience if you get good at it um, and, and making other content. I, I think in terms of the business side of it, um, that other stuff is where it's at. It's, just stand up is so crazy competitive. Like three people make it. Yeah. off of just stand up it's like brian regan jim gaffigan and maria bamford that's it everyone else yeah. had a vehicle that got them there so it's really important in that regard and it's also creatively uh i mean all of my favorite stand-up comedians were in writers rooms writing for someone else and i don't think that's a coincidence i think when you learn to write in different vehicles you come back to stand up strong when you learn to write sketch you understand that muscle set it's cross training Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can bring that back to stand up if you write tweets man writing tweets is such a great way to really pare down your punchlines and really get exact premises stated. And then at roast battles, I love doing roast battles. They make great clips, but it's also just, sometimes you'll have an idea with for a roast battle joke and you're like, well, you know what? I could also use that in my act. So I'm gonna scratch that off and then try it tonight on stage. So I, I love just trying it all, doing it all um, for both business and creative purposes. Nice, heard that, man. Um, awesome, Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. That was a podcast. We'll fade that out, man.